Welcome back to the studio. <clears throat> it's been so long ago, at least a year probably, since I did the growth chart giraffe. <clears throat> I've said before I'm always trying to catch up with my past and I thought I was doing better at that but the other day I was rummaging around down here and I found a pile. Ooh. Pile of finished tops that have yet to make it to the quilt frame. So today I ran up to my local quilt shop which is about a half hour drive and I bought uh, some backings for about four or five tops. So in the next few days I'm going to try and knock out a few of these and this was one of them. So I have the orange backing on the frame. It's a little bit brighter, more vibrant than the orange front. This was an ombre uh, fabric. You can see the top is a little brighter than the bottom. It fades as it goes down, which I thought was cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on the frame. But one of the points I wanted to make today, this is a question that uh, people ask all the time. Um, I see it several times and other uh, members of the team at Urban Elements see it about loading a, a quilt vertically or horizontally. And it really all comes down to the panto that you use. Is it a directional panto? And today's panto I'm using is directional. It does have a difference whether it's uh, vertical or horizontal but it doesn't make a visual difference. Sometimes a panto is directional in that uh, something might be upside down. Uh, lettering is a perfect example. It might say, say Merry Christmas or Happy Birthday. And you don't want that running um, vertically rather than horizontally. Also, it might be a actual figure like uh, uh, Santa Claus or a gnome. You don't want that running sideways up the quilt. You want that running horizontally. Uh, in this particular case I'm using a uh, geometric pattern and um, I'm trying to use a little bit more geometric patterns. I don't uh, use them very often but I'm using one today and it will look different horizontally than vertically but visually it doesn't make any difference. It's a geometric pattern so it won't make any difference. So rather than loading this uh, quilt this way and making dozens and dozens of passes, very short passes, I'm gonna load it this way and probably just have two passes. I haven't even counted yet or seen how many uh, will come up. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Geometric pattern and I'm gonna load it horizontally. Should make no difference as long as the pattern you choose is uh, not directional and that doesn't, uh, just depend on digital. That's the same if it's digital or if it's a paper panto. So I already have this pressed more or less and I have the backing and everything loaded. Today I have isocord thread in the top and bobbin. Uh, equal weight. They're slightly different color. They're both shades of orange. The backing's a little bit darker orange fabric so I chose a slightly darker orange thread. Um, so all of those settings are done and all I have to do is baste the top of this and get the program loaded with the design I'm going to use. So let's get that done. This should be pretty quick. I think two passes maybe will do it. This is the pattern that I'm going to be using. Diagonal plaid diamonds cut. It's a fairly new pattern by Patricia Ritter and you can see that it is directional um, and uh, this is what I'm going to be using. This shows you what the original pattern is and this shows you what the interlocking rows are. So you can see it's slightly different if I turn it to the side but not enough that it's going to make a difference. So I already have this programmed into the machine so I'm ready to have this start stitching out and I can show you what the stitching looks like. I think this may be the last row and I think this is a pretty good vantage point.
Well, this was a small one, so you knew it wasn't going to take long. <clears throat> so this was our growth chart giraffe. This comes in two different uh, kits. There's the giraffe and the llama. Now you put your own uh, background fabric to it and uh, so the white and the orange. The kit just comes with the uh, appliques. And I did a video on this. It's probably been a year. Um, but I've only ever done the one. I didn't do the, um, the llama. And I'm glad I finally got this done. This is the same one that we have here in the studio. I don't know if you can see that from where the camera is. Uh, Patricia did a different geometric pattern on hers than what I did. Um, this is a fairly loose pattern, but it looks pretty good. So I'm glad that's finished. I will uh, get the um, binding made and I might just do straight grain binding on this because it's not going to get wear and tear. It's not going to be getting pulled up um, on the bed the way a normal quilt would. So straight grain binding uh, probably will be because that will be a lot quicker to make for me. And I still probably will have m my friend do the uh, binding, hand whip the part binding down. But this is a really gorgeous pattern. This would be great for uh, men, I think, it looks kind of like a diamond plaid, uh, looks like that stainless uh, steel or chrome stuff they sell at Lowe's or Home Depot that they use in the back of trucks or their toolboxes. So when uh, people are always talking about what would be a good panto for men, I would say this would definitely be one. This is called um, diagonal plaid diamond cut. So either way you look at it, this would be a stellar panto for the men. So that's it for me today. I'm wrapping this one up. Thanks for spending some time with me in the studio. I'm hoping in the next few videos that we have coming out that these are going to be short videos that are getting some of these tops done that I have laying around so I can get the new samples hung up in the studio. And then after a few weeks of getting the samples quilted and I have time to get the bindings and the sleeve on, then I'll go ahead and redress the studio because uh, it's about time for me to do that. Normally when I do that, I also clean it up. Fortunately, you can't pan around yourself because I've got a huge mess over in that corner. I keep saving batting scraps, but I almost never use them. I wish... Um, I had somebody that locally that uh, came by and grabbed the batting scraps and used them for bags or something. I just don't do it. Um, but that's it for me today. I'm almost color coordinated. Uh, thanks for stopping by the studio. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. Thanks for uh, commenting on any of the videos, uh, liking and sharing and subscribing. Those things mean a lot to us and it also helps other people uh, see the videos. Um, and it does something with the algorithm. So thanks for subscribing and liking. We really appreciate that. Until next time, take care of yourself and take care of each other. Oh, I turned the light off.